In this video, we will see how we can connect using FTP and using a client, external client, not Dreamweaver, in this case, uh, to our website. So we're gonna connect the local and the remote side. So there are many FTP clients that you can use. And if you don't wanna use Dreamweaver again, uh, if you're using Dreamweaver actually, otherwise, uh, if you're not using Dreamweaver, you're probably gonna need this uh, a lot more. So you could, there are many options. I'm gonna go in this video with uh, WinSCP. I already created another guide for FileZilla and maybe I, I will create more with other clients. So this one here is good because it's free. It's pretty easy to use, user-friendly, really light, etc., etc. Now, if you want more information, you will find it right here. There are also other options, but this is free. So click on the download up in the bar and click on the green button. Unfortunately, there is no other version rather than uh, Windows. So you cannot use it like on Mac, I guess, on other operating systems. So just proceed with the download, pretty easy. Just download the file in your computer. I'm gonna insert it in my Dreamweaver course folder here. You can see I've already downloaded Smart FTP, which is also good, but it's not for free. You have a free trial, but then you need to buy it. So I'm gonna open the folder where I downloaded this, WinSCP, and then just double click to run the installation. And just go pretty quick. Now there are two versions here. One is Commander, the other one is Explorer. In my opinion, I think this is better. It kind of the, uh, looks uh, similar to other clients that I've used, but you can try also the other version here. So I'm gonna go with the Commander which is gonna show the local and the remote folder of the website. So I think it's better for management and having everything under control and monitor everything. Okay, now we're finished. So we can just launch the software and also the little uh, installation page uh, information if you want. So I'm gonna keep those two checkboxes on and we're gonna give a quick look to the guide in the side here. So this is telling you everything you, you need to do to connect your um, domain, your, your space with the information given by the provider. So if you don't succeed in this, you can always contact your provider, the one that gave you the domain and, uh, the, and ask them so, to help you. So usually you buy the domain and the, the web space together. And you need, of course, to, to have some space to put your files. So it's kind of a cloud um, space. So it's, an, it's on a server that is given by a hosting provider. So you, you need the username, you need the password, you need your domain, and you need to put it in here. You can see the here, we have a shortcut of uh, WinSCP. And this is the little software itself. So you can create a new site. You can also save more sites to access to different sites. And you, here you just need to put all the information. So usually it's is, um, you need to type here and uh, is your domain. And then you need to put the username and the password right here. Make sure, again, all these are correctly set. Otherwise it won't connect. And you can try different solutions if it doesn't just, you know, contact and ask for help. Now you can see I've, I've already connected to, and I can see here the, the two. And this is my uh, hosting provider, by the way. So I found all the information on a specific page just by searching client, FTP, configuration, and there is an example here with the images also with FileZilla, but I'm not using FileZilla, but it's pretty similar. So you can see also in FileZilla, we need to put the host name, so FTP do and domain usually, or sometimes it's SFTP, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you copy and paste all the uh, suggestions here that they will give you. And again, if you have any problems, look for the uh, you know attention here boxes because probably there's a there's the solution there but if you have any problems i think they will give you help like with the chat or by phone or via email now this is the remote folder of one of the website that i
currently manage. And these are all the files that are stored in there. So sometimes I do everything online. For example, with WordPress, this is a WordPress site. I do everything online. Some other occasion, I create the website totally in the local folder, like for the Dreamweaver course, and then I upload it. Now, this is the other thing you can do. So you can click and drag and place it in the desktop in this case. So it, this is a download when you click and drag from the remote to the local, and that's going to download it in your computer. Or you can go the other way, so you can just click and drag and put it in your remote folder. So that's really easy. It's just dragging and dropping files and folders and all the other stuff you need for a website. And it's really easy. It's really, you know, user friendly. It's like using Windows, essentially, but you're using a connection here and you're working with the cloud. You can also upload from there. So you can select something, you can click on the little upload button and then go. And I don't want to override this right now, but it's going to ask you if you want to override. So if you need to update the files in your website, probably you want to override. You can also, you have tools here to confront, to compare the local and the remote. You can see this is going to tell you if the, the file is more recent or less recent or bigger or smaller when you are overriding, et cetera, et cetera. And so all you need to do now if, if you don't want to use WordPress, this is again a WordPress configuration. So you can see the index PHP and all, everything else here, all the files, all the folders are from WordPress. But if you want, uh, if you don't want to create WordPress, you can create your own site. Just make sure you have an index HTML page and then you upload all the CSS and all the other folders in this area. Now, uh, there are other tools here, like you can go back and forward, navigate into the folders. You can refresh if something is not looking as it's supposed to. You can download, you can modify, you can edit, you can rename. Uh, you can delete files you don't need anymore, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think it's really, you know, as I said, really self-explanatory, really simple to use. If you know how to get from, you know, scratch to here, I think you know how to handle all of the rest. Now, I just want to show you here in my Dreamweaver folder from the video course that I have some files that I created in the video course. Let me go here in, for example, lesson 16. You can see these are HTML files. I have an index, HTML, and everything. So if I want to uh, put this and publish this on the web, I need to upload everything or just click and drag and drop, select, drag and drop. You can also right click, and from here you can upload. You can delete, you can uh, go back to Dreamweaver, modify, or you can edit this, or you can just upload, and there you go. So I've just uploaded, now I can delete it, and so on. So you can see it's really easy and uh, pretty understandable. So I'm going to stop with this video guide. If you enjoyed, subscribe the channel to stay updated. If you want to thank us, if you want to support us, join the channel as a supporter. And check our courses in Dreamweaver and WordPress if you're interested. And so you can use Dreamweaver to, to you know, do upload and download, or you can use an external uh, FTP. And if you're not using Dreamweaver, again, you probably need this. If you want to code, write your code on a word processor, then you need a client to upload it on the web and publish it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next guide.